Some people wonder, does the Bible even have anything to say about homosexuality? And I encourage them to, to look for themselves. And there's a few places to look up. So let me list a few places just to read about the issue so you understand. Romans 1, 24 to 32 talks about homosexuality. Genesis 19, uh, Leviticus 18, 22, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, Ephesians 5, verse 3, 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10, and Jude 7. I say all that because I want you to hear it's not just a church preaching against it. God talks about it. And he says, this isn't my plan. This isn't the way I've designed you. Um, this, is, this is not good. And so hear God's plan for you. Understand what he says about it. And then be faithful to his calling to you. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Well, first of all, homosexuality is claiming or pursuing a behavior or a passion or a desire or a practice or a pride or identity in sexual behavior that goes against God's good plan. And repeatedly across scripture, without any nuance or qualification, God's very clear that it's not according to his will. And that in fact, that practice leads towards hell. It's in rebellion against him. Some places to look that up for yourself so you're not just taking my word for it. Romans chapter 1, verse 24 to 32. Genesis 19, Leviticus 18, 22. Leviticus 20, 13. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Ephesians 5, 3 through 6. 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10. And Jude 7. In all those places, God is giving a warning. He is giving a command not to pursue an identity or practice of homosexuality. Are you struggling with same-sex attraction? Are you struggling with homosexual sin? Well, here's some truths to help you. One, turn to Christ if you never have. Moralism, being good, is not going to save you. Only trusting in Christ as Lord and Savior, believing in your heart He died on the cross and rose from the grave. That's where salvation, that's where hope is found. Attest yourself. If you claim the name of Christ but you continue in sin, read the book of 1 John and see uh, the, the, what it really looks like to be saved and test yourself to make sure you're in the faith. If you're a Christian and you're struggling with sinful temptation in the area of homosexuality, seek help, ask for prayer, confess your sins to Christ, find a godly pastor, a counselor to help you, turn away from it, avoid and resist that temptation, be in God's word daily, that's the sword of the spirit, be in prayer, be in church, be with believers and find hope, our Christ can rescue you. How should you treat friends and family who identify as homosexual? Well, you should love them. Love them. Don't push them away. Bring them in. Don't, don't uh, insult them or be arrogant or put them down. Treat them with respect and kindness and love. Be compassionate and humble. The same way you would want to be treated, treat them. But be honest. Don't tell lies about what you really believe. Speak the truth, but speak it in love. Be prepared to give an answer for the hope that's within you. But be very careful that as you speak the truth, you don't water it down that you're honest with them. But pray, ultimately, God can save anyone. So pray to the God of our salvation, pray to Jesus that he might change their hearts. Say, listen, your friends and family that, that have identified as homosexual, their ultimate issue is not homosexuality. Their ultimate issue is sin, period. So pray to God to save them from their sin. Is God anti-gay? The short answer is no. He's actually for those who are gay, for those who choose any sort of identity apart from them, in that he goes to the cross for them. While they're enemies, he dies for them. 2 Peter 3, 9 is real clear that the Lord is patient towards those who are his enemies. He doesn't want anyone to perish and go to hell. He wants everybody to reach repentance. 1 Timothy 2, 4 explains God wants everybody to be saved. But here's the problem. If we pick up an identity and we continue in a behavior that is contrary to God's command, contrary to his voice, we show we've turned our back on him. And God's wrath is real. His punishment and justice is real. So let's be careful. If we pick up an identity like gay, homosexual, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, queer, we have gone directly against who the Lord created us to be. Can someone be a gay Christian? No. It's not possible to simultaneously claim an identity of being under the Lordship of Christ, being a Christian, and, and to pick up an identity that directly goes contrary to God's command. Gay. 
Those two words cannot go together. It is possible, though, to be a Christian who struggles against same-sex attraction. But the difference is you're not claiming that as who you are. You're not claiming that as your identity. You are a Christian who struggles with that particular temptation. And 1 John 3, 9 says it this way, No one who has been born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. So if you claim the name of Christ, genuinely authentically, you cannot simultaneously claim an identity that remains in sin. Is same-sex attraction a sin? No. Same-sex attraction is a temptation towards the sin, towards choosing the sin of homosexuality. But when homosexual attraction is embraced as acceptable uh, in a desire, in an action, or as an identity, then it becomes sinful intent. And so while same-sex attraction leads towards sin, it can be resisted. While it leads towards dishonorable passions, it can be resisted. In Christ, it can be resisted. In the same way, heterosexual attraction in itself is a temptation. It's not a sin in itself. But when heterosexual attraction is embraced outside of marriage as an acceptable behavior, pattern, thought, uh, action, or identity, then it becomes sin. So just because you feel that way doesn't mean you've chosen sin, but you must resist the temptation. Is someone born gay? Does God create homosexuals that way? The answer is no. God doesn't tempt anyone or make anyone sin. It's a decision we make ourselves. We're born with both an inherited sin and guilt and inclination towards sin, and then we choose to sin against God, morally deciding to pick up an identity to value something more than Him, to seek pleasure and satisfaction our way rather than His. So we need to be careful. Just as though there's no genetic excuse for anger or murder or lying or cheating or stealing, there's no genetic excuse for sexual sin, whether homosexual sin or heterosexual sin. And our family and cultural environment may influence that. A particular sin may make us more bent towards that, but it's not a justification for picking up an identity or practice that is contrary to God's commands. Should Christians be for or against uh, homosexual marriages, unions, or adoptions? Is it right for Christians to force biblical beliefs on a nation that is primarily um, not Christian? Well, here's the bottom line. The Bible is God's voice, and the Bible is really clear. When a nation, its leaders, and its people follow God's voice, it will go well for them. But, but moralism, mere moralism, will not fix a nation. Only a heart that is centered on God will fix a nation. So what do we do as Christians? We show love, we speak kindness, but we speak truth. We vote according to truth, where we have a choice. We advocate and exhort people to turn to God and to do what is right, but we do it with gentleness, kindness, love, and respect. So no, Christians should not be for homosexual marriages, homosexual unions, or homosexual adoptions and we should pursue biblical beliefs even in a non-Christian nation. Gender issues may seem new to our day, but there's nothing new under the sun. Homosexuality, pedophilia, bestiality, and transgender, unfortunately, is a part of human history. So what do we do about it? What does God say about it? Well, God's real clear. He made us male and female. It's obvious anatomically, genetically, we are either male or female. And listen, uh, that doesn't mean your behavior has to conform exactly to the typical range of male and female. You might be a male who's a little bit more effeminate, but if you pick up an identity as female, if you dress as a female, what you are doing is declaring that God made a mistake. Likewise, if a female is more masculine, that's one thing, but to pick up an identity as a male, to dress as a male, to behave as a male, that is going contrary to God's good plan of how he created us to be.